welcome to Facts or Frauds. All right, we're on the record in file 23-21516-FH, People versus Donald Green and Lamont Lester. We are here today for a pretrial hearing in this case, and we are proceeding today by video conference. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record, beginning with Ms. Mir. B.B. Mayor Matt, the people. John Glazier on behalf of Mr. Lester, Your Honor. All right, and Mr. Glazier, where do we stand with Mr. Lester's case today? Yeah, Your Honor, I'd ask to uh, set it over for another pretrial, and I, I guess I'd like to address Bond. I've never met Mr. Lester until today. We got people to see, and they go on the yeah, This was me and I just got mercy. We're waiting on my information. In district court. All right, sorry, we had some uh, background noise happening. What, what was that that you said, Mr. Glazier? I'd like to set it for another pretrial. I think there was an exam, so we need to get the uh, transcript ordered on that anyway. But uh, I would also like to address Bond. I, I haven't met Mr. Lester until today, Your Honor. This was handled by somebody else in district court. All right, what is it you would like to say about Bond? Yeah, Your Honor, I guess I'd ask for a PR, but there's a there's a three charges here: possession of meth, and a couple iron O's. And it, it, obviously, there's a habitual on it. He looks like he's got some receiving and a concealing, uh, escape and, and uh, aggravated burglary. Uh, those are quite a ways back; they're over twenty years ago. Um, there's there's a small amount of methamphetamine here. And uh, I, it would be helpful to me if he was out to, uh, so that I can meet him in my office to review this case with him once I get the transcript. The other thing is, Your Honor, the, the information doesn't list an address for him, but he has an address. He's living here in Adrian. And in fact, his, uh, I think it's his son, is uh, in his senior year of high school here. All right. Uh, Ms. Mir, anything people would like to say? Um, just, Your Honor, obviously, given his criminal history and the fact that he was bound over and a habitual fourth offender, um, I think a PR bond would be too low. I don't know exactly what his bond is set at. Um, I guess maybe it's it could be reviewed, but I, I don't think a PR is appropriate, just given that. Um, he was also, and it was testified to an exam that he um, had actively re resisted and was combative to the officers um, when they attempted to arrest him on the, the methamphetamine. Um, he also uh, did give it a fake name at first um, because he had two active failure to appear warrants out of Monroe, uh, one out of Monroe and one out of uh, will be our court from a uh, blister. They were traffic tickets, Your Honor, and uh, those got dismissed. Only that one that I'm building now. Yeah, that's what he got arrested for with some outstanding <laughs> traffic tickets, failure to appear, I think. <laughs> That's why I moved back to Adrian. Plus, it's my son's last year of high school. All right. Well, uh, I, I appreciate it's your son's last year of high school, but a bond needs to be designed to ensure Mr. Lester's uh, appearance at court. Yeah, uh, given, given the information that the court has available to it about uh, Various factors speak to that and some other things. So Mr. Lester apparently does live here in Adrian and has uh, a, a local address, um, apparently some kind of tie to the community through his son. Um, I'm a bit more concerned that he's charged in this case with two counts of resisting and obstructing and does have his past conviction in Ohio for escape, um, which speaks to... Uh, I might, I might say something real fast. Sir Lester, please don't interrupt me. Uh, I think those speak to uh, his willingness to comply and, and um, be the likelihood of uh, coming back to court. So uh, the bond is currently set in the amount of $20,000 cash or surety. Um, that they, I would agree with Ms. Muir at this point. I don't think PR bond in this case is uh, significant enough, is enough to satisfy me that uh, Mr. Lester would continue to appear. Um, I am willing to reduce that bond to 
uh, a five thousand dollar cash or surety bond with the GPS tether. Um, and I think under those circumstances, uh, the court would be satisfied that Mr. Uh, Lester would appear for future court hearings. So uh, that's what I'm willing to do with respect to bond. Um, I will adjourn this out for a, another pre-trial on November 1st at 8.15 a.m. Mr. Olsen, well, I have to leave because I got a letter from him as well that I have to leave twice. I think it's twice a week. Uh, I, got I can't understand. I can't. I need you to sit closer to the microphone, Mr. Lesser. I can't I got hear a letter you. from Mr. Paul stating that I had to him twice a week if I made mine. That was another reason why I, I can't, to. Mr. Lesser. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but the microphone's not picking up your voice, and I can't understand what you're saying. Hello, can you hear me now? That's better. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, I got a letter from Mr. Darren Cost, and I was instructed to meet with him twice a week uh, while out on bond. Um, that's the reason why I asked for a signature bond. I have no problem with it. I can't afford it. I don't have it in cash right now to be able to uh, make bond. So I'll be sitting here idle and I'm just trying to get out of here so I can go ahead and finish going back to work and getting ready to go back to school. All right. I, I appreciate that. I've made my decision on bond, Mr. Lester, and that is uh, not you. going to change that decision at this point. Thank you. Next pre trial. Perfect. November 1st. Thank you. Y Your Honor, uh, does the court order the transcript from the district court? It does not appear that that has been ordered at this point, but uh, we will do that. You're going to order that? Okay. All right. We are on the record in file 23-21516-FH, People versus Donald Raymond Lamont Lester. We are here today for a pretrial hearing in this case, and we are proceeding today by video conference uh, and also in person. We are, uh, or first let me ask the attorneys to place their appearance on the record, beginning with Ms. McClure. B.B. McClure, may I have the people? Your Honor, Michael Dagger Margosian for Mr. Lester. All right, and Mr. Dagger Margosian, where do we stand with Mr. Lester's case today? Uh, Your Honor, at this point, I, I don't, there's there's a breakdown of attorney-client relationship. I, I can't move forward and represent Mr. Lester. I've, I've, without getting into the details, obviously those are privileged, but um, it's, it's clear that Mr. Lester either needs to move forward pro se, and I can certainly be on standby, or I can conflict this out, but our, our office is not going to be able to represent Mr. Lester. Yeah, I would like the ACLU to pour. I poured everything to the ACLU. They already have my file and the Civil Rights Commission. Mr. Lester, I'm sorry, but the microphone at the jail is, is really bad. There's a bad echo there. Can you hear me, uh, so can you hear me can, now? Yeah, so I can, I can hear you. The issue is if you could talk not quite so loudly because it's an, it's an echo in the room that causes the problem. Um, I'm in, um, the ACLU and the Civil Rights Commission already are on this. Um, you can move my file to those. They already, I have uh, sent them my complaints. I've also got the uh, a failure to appear what I was picked up for in the first place was dismissed. And Mr. Bargosian is trying to move forward with, uh, with a, a trial. And I'm not feeling that. I want to move for an immediate dismissal because I was harassed for three days. And they already have wind of this. There should be... Uh, they should be asking for the body cams from August 2nd, as well as the 4th. Um, I still haven't went over any evidence. So the Civil Rights Commission has my, my paperwork um, and well, my affidavits, rather. And the uh, ACLU is on standby as well. I just rather for my whole file to go to them and let them represent them. Let them take a, a look at what's going on. I don't have any transcripts. I haven't talked to any smart goals in since then. Um, I had to have the court. I had to have the jail uh, email the uh, courts for a court day because I've been sitting here for so long. Like I said, the, the failure to appear got dismissed. That's what I was picked up for originally. Okay, so Mr. Lester, you, you've been charged with possession of methamphetamine and two counts of assaulting, resisting, obstructing a police officer. You have previously been represented by the public defender's office and they are requesting to uh, withdraw as your attorney 
at this point. If that were to happen, another attorney would be assigned to you. Uh, I just said the ACLU. I don't know what part of that nobody understands, but the ACLU is on standby as well as the Civil Rights Commission. I said it again. You you can forward that all over there to them, and you and they'll take the case without no money. You know, like all right. Know so, Mister Mister Lester, those that is not an option that I have to send this okay. case over to the ACLU. If you want the ACLU, I do, I do though, because I do though. So let's get that understood. Now I have that uh, that opportunity to do that, and I'm requesting that on record. Okay, you can you can request that, but the court is not in a position to do that. If you want someone else, to I represent am, sir. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not simple as you just put the case together and send it to him. It's not even you, Mr. Margosian, can do it. It's not even your office that needs to do it, it's Mr. Lester. <laughs> Mr. Lester, please don't interrupt me when I'm talking to you. Right here we go. All right. Right now, the public defender's office represents you. I'm going no, they don't. He just said he didn't want to represent. All right, Mr. Lester is off camera. I don't know whether he's still in the room. I'm standing or not. right here. I can hear every word. I'm here as a third party intervener and and a special appearance. All right, Mr. Lester, are you in agreement with Mr. Dagger Margosian's request to withdraw from your case? That's on him. I like I said before, I wanted to go to the ACLU or the Civil Rights Commission, I'm gonna say it again, for the court of record. They are on standby. They already know about all of this. I shouldn't have never been picked up in the first place. I was harassed for three days, three days. And you have the transcripts right there in front of you when the officers admitted that, that they just wanted me. And it's in the police report. Mr. Very Lester, Mr. Lester, I need a yes or no answer to the question of whether you are- again, that's on him. Mr. Lester, I've muted your device, Mr. Lester, because you are being disruptive and you are not allowing this court process to continue. I'm going to give this one more opportunity. Uh, I'm going to unmute your device. I'm going to ask you the question. If you don't answer or if you continue with this disruptive behavior, I am going to hold you in contempt and sentence you to 93 days in jail. Very unprofessional. Mr. Lester, are you in agreement or are you not in agreement with Mr. Dagger Margosian's request to withdraw as your attorney? Well, if you please, yeah, I'm in agreement. Please send that file over to the ACLU, please. I'm in agreement with that. Mr. Margosian, are you in agreement with you? Send that over to the ACLU, please. Can I get like a contact information? I mean, I don't just send a file. To you the know, ACLU. okay, yeah, but you know where the ACLU office is. I can get that to you. Yes, no problem. You can go off screen and I can get that to you. I have it right here in front of me. No problem. No problem. And, and if mean. that, if that, for whatever reason, I mean, that's outside the normal. Man, way. I'm not. not it's, not, it's as simple as right. my question of violating. You know that we're not going to keep going back and forth. I'm not right, doing whatever. It. Right. Mr. Mr. Lester, please stop. Uh, so Mr. Lester has consented to the uh, to Mr. Dagger Margosian withdrawing as his attorney. If there's some arrangement for Mr. Dagger Margosian to send information to the ACLU, uh, that is the court has no control over whether he is going to do that, and the court has no authority to require him to do that. And, and your uh, what the court what the court is required to do under this process is to uh, provide for the appointment of a special public defender. Uh, if Mr. Lester uh, can get the ACLU to represent him, then you need to make arrangements to do that. And if there's an appearance filed by the ACLU, then uh, they are welcome to represent him. Uh, but as it stands now, uh, he is without attorney and the court will make uh, the appropriate arrangements to have a special public defender appointed. If the ACLU uh, wants to substitute in place of that person, uh, they are welcome to do so. Yeah. Um, I also like for a PR bond. I've been sitting here almost 180 days. My bond is ridiculous. My family's not going to be able to pay that. All right, I will adjourn this case to February 7th. I'm requesting a bond, please, for the court of record. Mr. 
Mr. Lester, let me do one thing at a time. You're constantly right, interrupting me. I'm, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. Mr. Stop Mr. interrupting me, Mr. Lester. Good. Damn. How did it, man? Pre-trial is adjourned to February 7th at 8.15 a.m. Mr. Lester has made a request for a personal recognizance bond. Uh, court has addressed the issue of bond with Mr. Lester uh, numerous times previously. My um, decision on bond and reasons for it at this point uh, have not changed. Yeah. Mr. Lester currently has a too expensive, sir. Too expensive. Mr. Lester currently has a five thousand dollar cash or surety bond in this case, and that is appropriate, in my opinion, to assure his further appearances uh, at this court. And so, I'm going to deny the request for a personal recognizance bond. That's crazy, because uh, I am white. Mr. Mark, Mr. Lester. Lester. Mr. Lester. All right, you know what, Mr. Lester, stop. No. I, I muted your device, Mr. Lester. You have been warned repeatedly uh, by me in this hearing as well as in other hearings. You are in contempt of this court as a result of your behavior here today. It's a sentence of the court that you served 93 days in the Lenaway County Jail. Uh, there's no further information that the court needs to uh, find the contempt. It was directed in the presence of the court and after being warned numerous time, times. So Mr. Lester, you can let the officer that's with you know that you are done with court for today. I will put the device in the waiting room until you are gone. Okay, Ms. Hennigan, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Lester? I am, Your Honor. Okay. We are on record in file 23-21516-FH, People versus Donald Raymond Lamont Lester. We are here today for a pretrial hearing in this case, and we're proceeding today by video conference. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record, beginning with uh, Ms. McClure. P.B. McClure, we have the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Tamiris Hennigan on behalf of Donald Lamont Lester, who also um, goes by the name Damiano Fain. Sorry, what was that second name? Damiano, D-O-M-I-A-N-O, -O, last name Fain, F as in Frank, A-I-N. All right. Okay, so where uh, do we stand with this case today, Ms. Hennigan? Your Honor, I did have opportunity to meet with my client just this uh, this past week. He's this case has been reassigned to me, as the court is aware, and um, and we are working well together. But I do need to set this out. Well, actually, I think we can just schedule it for trial, and and then also, um, Your Honor, my client has asked me for two things this morning. One that I make his wish is known, his request known that he is requesting that the court set aside the contempt that he was previously sentenced on on January 24th, two, that he would like an opportunity to speak with the court and he understands that um, he needs to do that within boundaries and guidelines um, and be respectful in speaking with the court and take turns. And so I asked him, I told him that I would ask the court to give him an opportunity to speak to the court and he has assured me um, that if at any time I instruct him that um, he needs to stop conversating, that he will follow um, my lead, Your Honor. All right, let me uh, first ask Ms. McClure, is there anything we need to address from people's side at this point? Um, just that I wanted to place the offer on the record because I know Ms. Henningen just inherited the case and we, we weren't really successful in doing that before. Um, so at this time, the offer as stands is an attempt possession of meth and uh, an RNO. We would agree to no habituals and no MDOC um, if he pleads to those counts. 
Thank you. As it, as it stands right now is current. He is a habitual fourth and um, his guidelines are 46 to 120 in the MDOC. Thank you, Ms. McClure. Okay. And uh, so if we get to a trial, how many days do we need for that? Probably just one. I was going to say two, Ms. McClure, uh, just for just a caution, but I, it's up to you. Maybe a, a Wednesday plus another day, like a day and a half. Yes, that sounds great. All right, so I'm going to set it for a trial then just so we have a date uh, to move forward one way or the other. Um, Ms. Clark, can you give us a uh, two-day jury trial date, please? June 20th at 9 a.m. and June 21st at 9 a.m. I'm available both of those days. Mr. Sneed appears to be available then, too. Okay, so let's set a pre-trial then for June 12th at 8.15. Uh, obviously, if there's some uh, resolution that gets reached in the meantime and you want to get into court before that, we'll do what we can to uh, accommodate you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, Mr. Lester, uh, what is it that you would like to say? Every time I try to take something, I was getting cut off. And, and and not to be disrespectful, but it just seemed like my constitution and my civil rights are just being ran through. And it seemed like when I was trying to intervene to try to catch myself to make sure that I was being heard, it seemed like if I didn't say something at that time, I wasn't going to be heard. That's just that's just that's just any conversation between two men. That's usually how it go. Um, no disrespect to your cloth, your jurist or anything to that nature, but. I just wanted to make sure that I was being heard for the court of record because it seemed like any time I went to say anything else, I was being cut off. It all and it started all the way down from uh, Mr. Morgan, and it's still and it's, and I still feel like that my back is against the wall over some driving tickets. I've I've, I've addressed those so many times that that's what I was arrested for, and it's just like I'm not being heard. I'm not being heard and I'm, and I'm looking to you for some type of guidance, but then I'm just being, it seems like I'm being like double teamed from you and the prosecutor's office. I'm being held for something that I did over 30 years ago, uh, 20 years ago. I haven't been in any trouble. I don't like being in this. I don't like it at all. I can't stand it. I'm around kids now. I can't stand how they look at this. I hate every bit of it. And I just got assaulted yesterday by three of them. And make it so bad they put us all back in the same block, and I got assault in the hole. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get this. I, I, I have no patience for this anymore. Um, and as far as the habitual go, well, you already know that you know. As far as that goes, the scent, the, the 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 language from Michigan and Ohio is totally different, totally different. And I always thought that it was had to be a pattern, and I don't have a pattern. This was this was something that happened in 91. The last time I got in any kind of trouble was in 2000. That's over 23 years ago. And under Michigan's rules, they always I just read it just not too long ago that they had an automatic uh, uh, expungement after 10 years. So I'm still trying to figure out why is I'm being hit with these habituals like I'm some type of I stay in trouble all the time. I've done more in this community than anybody has ever been that, that I've ever done anywhere else. I'm, I'm helping at shelters. I'm doing what I can. I helped at the women's shelters. It's not like I'm just sitting around thumbing around getting in trouble. I'm not like that. I don't like trouble. I'm been trying to help people. I'm not I'm not Jesus or anybody trying to save anybody, but I'm trying to be mindful of, of my, my fellow my fellow human being. That's all I'm trying to do. But I'm tired, man. I've lost everything in the past six months. I am. A, it feels good to say that I'm a government contractor after coming where I come from, because I'm not from here. And I was being told by Ohio that I need to come take care of this. But I didn't want to come in that courtroom without me having you know, some, some type of foundation to establish myself. <laughs> they're trying to dump these tickets. And that's what they're trying to make it seem like. And that's what they're trying to make it seem like I was getting in trouble on top of it. And I wasn't. I was assaulted by two of the police officers. My finger was busted wide back open. I was stabbed. And that officer knew prior to that. 
This was what that all ensuing, and nobody seems like they even care. I've been asking for the August second, for the August, August second body cams, and and I'm not getting anywhere so you can see it for yourself. Okay, I am now, not a troublemaker. Mr. Fain, wrap it up for me, okay, so that the judge can move on and I can make. I can get that part. I'm just, I'm just hurt by you. Feelings, man. It hurts me as a human being to see somebody treat me like this. I don't I treat understand. people like this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, for giving him the opportunity to speak to the court. Um, I'm looking into these things that Mr. Fain is concerned about, and I will be going back over to meet with him to discuss it further. I just wanted him to have a chance today to establish um, a little trust in the court that you will hear him when he um, when he works within the boundaries and the court rules that are established. All right. I uh, have previously stated in other uh, court hearings my uh, reasons and rationales for the decisions that I've made uh, in this case, and I would stand on those. So we can uh, conclude the pretrial in this matter. Mr. Lester, you can let the officer that's with you know that you are done with court for today. I'm going to do a breakout session before I go with, uh, with Mrs. Hannigan before I go. I need to talk to her real fast. Because I'm still, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't Your know. Your Honor, is the court able to accommodate that? If not, I can go over and see him. Yeah, okay. I can do that briefly. Thank you. I didn't hear what he said. I, just, I can barely hear He's going to do the breakout. <laughs> Hang on, hon. He's going to do the breakout. Just hold tight. He's going to put us in the room together. Uh, people of State of Michigan versus Donald Raymond Lamont Lester. We are here today for a final pretrial conference in this case. Uh, ahead of a trial scheduled for June 20th and 21st. We are proceeding today partially in person and partially by video conference. First, let me have the attorneys place their appearance on the record, beginning with Ms. McClure. E.B. McClure filling in for prosecutor of record, Isaac Steen. Samaris Hennigan on behalf of Donald Lester. All right, and uh, Mr. Lester, I believe, is in the uh, jail Zoom 2 device. Mr. Lester, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, so uh, I don't know what's going on with the camera. We can't see you. It looks to be I can see you. almost. I'm, I'm saying that we can't see you, Mr. Lester. Uh, so, Ms. Hennigan, uh, where do we stand? Are we ready to proceed to trial on June 20th? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I met with my client yesterday and did make the final offer to him with regards to plea agreements. My client has declined to accept um, the, the plea that was offered by prosecution. I also was informed by my client that he um, has filed a few motions I guess you would say pro se. I have not seen those motions myself, but he says he mailed them to the court. Uh, he does have many objections to the proceedings. That being said, the next step that would be appropriate um, with regard to our legal procedures would be to go forward with trial. I am prepared to do that, um, though I do believe that my client will object to that, Your Honor. Um, so I do want to make sure that I represent his wishes as well while i still inform the court of whether or not i'm ready to proceed so i i will be ready to proceed for trial next week that being said my client does not want to go to trial as he feels that this that the court doesn't have jurisdiction over him on this matter in order for us to move to trial and he was very upset i would add just for the record for his uh for appellate purposes for him that he was upset that I agreed to a trial schedule um, at a past hearing. And I, I did try to explain to him that that's just a procedure, that the court is on timeframes uh, according to statute, and that at some point we do have to set a trial schedule, even though it was my intent to continue to try to uh, negotiate this case for him along the way. All right, to the extent that there's any objection based on uh, court's jurisdiction, uh, I would- I can't hear you, can you speak up please? To the extent that you. there's, to the extent that there's an, any objection uh, to proceeding to trial based on the court's jurisdiction, I would deny that as uh, the court 
uh, does have jurisdiction over this case. It is a uh, felony case involving an alleged felony, which is alleged to have occurred within uh, Lenawee County State of Michigan. Uh, this is the circuit court for the Lenawee County State of Michigan, and therefore uh, jurisdiction is appropriate. Uh, um, Ms. McClure, uh, is there anything we need to address from the people's side? Um, the people have not received any motions that have been referenced, um, but as far as I know, we are prepared to proceed a trial next week as well. All right, so uh, do we have proposed jury instructions and voir dire questions yet? We do not, and I spoke with Mr. Sneed yesterday, but I'm certain that we can, um, we can agree upon this within the next day or so. So right. I see some in our file, so maybe he's drafted them and just not. Yes, it was working on them. Okay, so I'll need those by the end of the week so that we have uh, an adequate amount of time to get prepared right. um, uh, for trial. I would also like to uh, intervene here real quick. But that being said, I was uh, the motion is just not for the jurisdiction. It's also for personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. Um, I had the right to a resist an unlawful arrest and it's not being addressed. Uh, the Supreme Court ruling on that, uh, I just read that not too long ago. And um, they arrested me for uh, an old traffic ticket is where it started at. Um, they're trying to dodge the point of uh, where they harassed me for three days before they arrested. Um, and as far as this possession uh, situation go, um, I was informed yesterday by my attorney who I haven't talked to since uh, March, uh, that I was looking at 14 years. Um, under your court, Michigan rules, that uh, after 10 years, under a lower uh, a lower uh, felony, after 10 years, it's automatically expunged. So I'm trying to figure out how am I being charged with a habitual criminal. And also, I would like to get that in writing that you said that you have jurisdiction over this case, but not the said person. And that's all in the motions that I sent over to the clerk's office. I also have them all notarized. I also have copies of everything that I sent over there. So there should be somewhere in y'all file that y'all should have it. Your Honor, I did. And personal. And like I said, I haven't talked to this woman since March. <laughs> she told me that I was going to be released out of a bond. Uh, and I haven't heard anything from her since then. I wrote her a letter. The first time I've seen this woman in about two or three months. It was the first time was yesterday. And she doesn't represent the said name anyway. I've talked to her about that situation too. Somebody's not being truthful here. And I've been sitting here all right. 10 months without a bond okay. or, or even so much as calling my witnesses. She's never asked me anything. So my due process is being violated. Also, I'm sitting in here on an unsigned warrant. Unsigned. A probable cause warrant. They trying to make it look like they arrested me for those charges, and that's what that's it's not what it was for. That's not what it was for. I was arrested for driving on a suspended license from back in 2016. That case got dismissed. Your Honor, I did inform you. It's not addressing none of those issues, Your Honor. Period. Mr. Mr. Lester, I need you to stop interrupting people, okay? What is it that you wanted to say? Uh, I, I did inform him yesterday that the charges he was facing could, um, that it's up to 14 years because there's consecutive sentencing available on those charges. He has a felony that is up to 10 years and then two RNOs, which can be sentenced consecutively if that were requested and or if the court were to do it. And I informed him of that at the time that I was telling him about the plea agreement that would allow him to be released today. Um, so he is correct in that I did inform him of that, but it's not because of a habitual offender um, notice. And he asked me about that yesterday and I reiterated again yesterday that that is not why. Um, <clears throat> that is not why he's facing that amount of time. It, it was simply me telling him worst case scenario um, in this matter. 
All right. So uh, to the extent that the personal jurisdiction issue has been raised in addition to subject matter jurisdiction, and again, deny any request uh, on, on those bases because the court, again, has personal jurisdiction over Mr. Lester, who is a uh, human being located in Lenawee County, Michigan, and alleged to have commit a felony crime in Lenawee County, Michigan. How did that commit a violent crime? With respect to the argument that Mr. Lester made regarding the right to resist an unlawful arrest, uh, that's why the court is having a trial. One of the elements that the prosecutor needs to prove uh, in a uh, resisting and obstructing case is that the officers were uh, on duty, acting lawfully, and, and made a lawful arrest that uh, Mr. Lester uh, resisted. So that's that's the purpose of the trial. Uh, with respect to uh, any issue about uh, expunged convictions, uh, we're not we're not even to that point yet. The, the habitual offender issue comes into play only after uh, a conviction has entered, and then the court has to determine whether the convictions listed in the habitual offender notice in fact happen and can appropriately be used under the statute uh, for the sentencing enhancements that uh, have been notified uh, in the information. And so... Uh, okay. So I'll yeah, do this. Whenever you get done, I'd like to address the issue too, please. All right, I'm going to mute Mr. Lester uh, because I'm, I can't have people talking over me while I'm trying to uh, create a record. Uh, all right, so then we are ready to proceed to trial on June 20th. Again, I'd, I'd like to have the voir dire questions and jury instructions uh, ready or, or to or by the end of the week so that we can have those uh, ready to go. Thank you, Jan. Yeah. Um, before we go, uh, I just... Ms. McClure, Ms. McClure, can I just understand from you what that final offer you made on this case or what the final offer the prosecution made on this case was? Yes, <clears throat> it would be. Ms. McClure, I actually have a copy that I could pass to the court too, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I, I mean, it, we'll just take a second. It's an added count for possession of meth in a park, which is a two-year offense. And we were offering credit for time served, which is approximately 10 months. And we have no objection to a PR bond at the time the plea is taken. And Ms. McClure, could I just add that uh, Mr. Snead did inform me that you had authority to um, do fines and costs only on this as well. Would that be accurate? Um, I think, yeah, I think that would be part of the credit for time served. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the prosecution has made an offer to resolve the case uh, if Mr. Lester were willing to plead guilty to uh, possession of methamphetamine in a park. That's a two-year uh, maximum possible penalty, but the prosecution has also agreed to uh, credit for time served and, or fines and costs and a personal recognizance bond release until the date of the sentencing. Is that all accurate, Ms. McClure? Oh, is that? Yes. That's crazy. Yes, right. that's accurate, Your Honor. And uh, Mr. Lester is not interested in uh, agreeing to that plea. Is that correct? It's my understanding, but uh, it seems that he would like to say something about it, Your Honor, so I'd prefer that he answer that question yeah. himself. Yeah. I, I would like to say something because of the fact that you keep trying to let me out on a PR bond and you want me to come back to court for sentencing, but you won't let me out to try to get my witnesses and gather the evidence that I need to be able to present it at trial. I haven't even went over this one. I haven't even went over any kind of defense with this woman. I am being prosecuted and persecuted by her and a prosecutor. And it's obvious. It's very obvious. It stands out. I haven't talked to this lady since March. March. And when I did, she came in there and coerced me into trying to keep her on my case. All right. So, Mr. Lester, that wasn't really responsive to the question that was asked. The question you're being I don't know nothing right about that. I told her what it was then. And, and Mr. I Lester, Mr. Lester. You keep trying I, to cut me off. 
Well, that's because you won't let me create the right. record and do my job. So I, I'm I trying try to, to do my it. job. You're not the one sitting in jail, sir. Well, I'm in Japanese prison, load. Japanese prison got me down. Here, would you right, please so mute my client? I, I don't want him to. The record should reflect that. The record should reflect that Mr. Lester had. I'm sorry. So, Mr. Lester, the the question I'm asking and that I need an answer to is is uh, you you've heard the offer that I've indicated the prosecution has made to you to resolve the case. Do you or do you not want to? No, I'm not because they had no business arresting me, Your Honor. And that all, I wasn't no, bothering no, anybody. Simple no is fine. That's all I needed. All I needed was no. Um, so We're talking to me answer, like I'm a kid. The answer is no, so we will proceed to trial next week. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to address this morning. So bond. I need a bond. That you are done with court. See what I'm saying? Yeah, we see what you're saying. When it came to trial date... You pled to that one count just like they offered you. Next up, sentencing day. And thanks for hanging out with some Facts or Frauds. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. You're subscribed and ring that bell. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. And a huge thank you to all of our Facts or Frauds channel members. And if you'd like to become a member, click on join right next to subscribe or the link in the description. Now, if you're still hanging around, thank you. Why not hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not already, and ring that bell. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Till next time, I'll see you soon.